Hey there everyone, this is Omar once again with Meet a Geek. Today I am joined by Andrew Vellis. He is a longtime Geekdom member and he is part of Promoter.io, which is now a Medallia company, which is very, very, very exciting. They they were acquired, what, was it a year ago, two years ago, something like that? A year and some change, so uh, July 15th, 2019 was oh. the day. That's excellent. So congratulations yep. on that. That that's a huge that's a huge deal for San Antonio and I'm sure for you guys at Promoter. But just Absolutely. for just so you guys know what Meet a Geek is, this is just a small show talking about uh, members of our community, getting letting you get to know them and get a little uh, to learn a little bit more about them and what are some things that they do and how we can all help each other out. So let's kind of go ahead and get started with Andrew. Andrew, thank you very much for being here. Uh, let's start with the first question. Uh, who are you? Oh, it's so existential. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, I mean, my, my name is Andrew Velis. Uh, I Excuse moved to... me, Andrew Velis. Lo siento. <laughs> I usually go by Velis, but it's it's pronounced Velis. Uh, it's just to be to be accurate, but um. <laughs> I, I joined, it. yeah, yeah. I joined, <laughs> I joined the Geekdom community. Like I joined, I moved to San Antonio in like 2014, I think mm -hmm. April 2014. And prior to that, I was uh, living in the Bay Area about basically the majority of my life. So that's kind of it, like in a nutshell, and of like the the momentum of like where I was from and where I'm at. And hopefully I can help you share like where I'm going. Um, sure. But that's th th like that formulates the where. And I think that's pretty much that's like I've been when I moved to San Antonio, I've never been there. And uh, I never even been in the state of Texas. I just kind of moved for and then I was like, wow, here I am. And so then I jo joined the G Kingdom community like. Like I think in the first on the, within the first month of uh, moving here to San Antonio. So tell me this. I mean, this is a little bit off script, but um, what was what was the impetus to bring you here to Texas, especially to San Antonio? Yeah, so that's gonna that's gonna be it's a good question. So what brought me here was um, I was working at another startup uh, in in San Francisco, and uh, a coworker there. Uh, poached me to basically say, you know, hey, this is if you, he, you know, he pitched me a proof of concept. He's like, you know, build this proof of concept. It was basically just a PowerPoint slide. I'm not, I'm not joking. With like a mock, with mockups, like actually nice design mockups. He's and I, and I asked him, you know, how much, how much of this has been built? And he goes, nothing. This is you're looking at. It. I said, okay, when do you want to get it done? And he told me the time frame. And I said, okay, well, you're not going to make that time frame. But let's do it because what he was basically saying was build this product with me, make it real. Uh, and if we get the funding we need, this is your job. This is your new job. And we're going to have to move to, to San Antonio, Texas, but you got your new job. And I said, that sounds like a really wild ride. Let's do it. You know, and so that was the impetus for the move uh, was just this doing i was doing a normal nine to five in software uh just doing software development uh under the professional services team which is like just kind of like one-offs for the client as you will mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah just to kind of frame that and then he just was brought me to lunch and he says you know i think you're very talented and i think it's, i think you got a shot at helping me out doing this do you want to do it i said yeah let's do it and it sounds really weird to say it that way it sounds really simple um, and part of me thinks about it back then saying, uh, if, if you know, if you knew this was going to happen before it happened, like, would you have done it? And I would, I, I actually would say, yes, yes, I would. I, I think I was not aware of the journey it was going to take me, but that's, but that's, that's how I, that's what, that was the impetus to bring me here to San Antonio. Okay, cool. So promoter now a Medallia owned company. What do you do? So now, now we're a subsidiary. Uh, so basically, they took Medall like Medallia took Promoter, and they just kind of 
they invested in it heavily as a product and now they're actually integrating it with other products that they've they've acquired oh cool and it yeah so now it's just growing as its feature set so now it's getting more complex it's uh it's feature it's it's feature set is getting more enriched and i'm also part of the process also has been like transitioning to medallia Mm -hmm. uh, like and how they operate and how they want to develop software. So there's a bit of that. So what have I been doing now is actually, I've just been managing the, like everything under the promoter umbrella I now manage currently. Oh, and so wow, that's cool. been a huge responsibility, uh, um, increase. And so it has its, it has its perks, but it also has its challenges because there's, I now interface with a lot of departments, um, throughout a given day. And so it's very easy to get meetinged. You know, that's a, that's a common workplace thing. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. You just got yeah. <laughs> meetings, bro. <laughs> I, I've, I've had to tell people like, I'm going to, I'm going to have to cancel this meeting purely on the fact that I have too many meetings today. <laughs> <laughs> what work can I get done? You know? So, so that's, so that's now what I do at, at Medallia as well as like advocate for the team also advocate for best practices of what what promoter does how we work and see any how that can translate to medallia's culture as a whole how big is medallia as a company i think it's about a thousand to two thousand they're growing okay. so it's it's definitely a big company yes so interfacing and, and, inside of the big company does have a lot of its challenges i'm sure i mean not just be, the yeah. whole meeting thing but just being able to work with like disparate teams is there like a lot of I don't, I don't want you to talk too much about the medallia because I'm not sure how much you can say, but is there a lot of like a, like an insular culture? Is it, is it very like, this is my station, this is where I stick to it? Like, how would you describe the culture of medallia uh, so far through the whole acquisition? That's a great question. And I, I, I'm not even trying to sell medallia. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, when you kind of get acquired, this is my second one. You don't know what you're going to get. In the sense that you know, you know that they bought you. I think there's a box you know? of chocolates that would that would also agree with you. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, you know that acquisitions is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you don't know what's inside, but you know you gotta eat it. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> um, or you just find another different, or you just find another candy. Like, <laughs> or you just you just leave the box there and then you yeah. go move on. And, and then I went running for 20 miles. Anyway, um, <laughs> I just kept running. Um, so I'm going to do that a lot because I, I, I love having fun with impersonations. So that's my nice, thing. nice. So Medallia's culture is very open, very transparent. And they're, they're, I, I've never seen that I've worked with so far a company that size. Not that they're acting small. It's just that. I mean, their, their philosophy is building, uh, helping companies be a place where customers and employees love. That's kind of their, I think that's like their, their philosophy. Mm -hmm. And they try to at least live that internally as well. And so in terms of siloing, uh, they try to dismantle that as much as possible. That's They're aware cool. of the hiccups that they have, which is because this is what they already use. Right. But in terms of like growing and like evolving, they realize that we got to break down those silos to help help people grow and help the company grow. And if they're going to keep keep growing as a company, they know that that's imperative that they work actively work on combating a siloing or, or say information blocking. Right. Very cool. Yeah. So so promoter IO, I mean, that was, that was a business that you guys had been working on for, for a long time. I mean, I don't want to say like a long time, but like, like 30 years, but you know, within the, the past two decades, right? Like mid two yeah. thousands to, um, what was Sorry. Yeah. Mid two thousands to, yeah, just, uh, about last year and some change. So about within two decades, you guys had started the business and were able to, to sell the business. So what did promoter IO do? And and is that how you got into the geekdom community in the first place? Yes, I, you know, I, I guess I definitely answer the, the the second question, which is that um, if, if we were going to start promoter as a small business, software business, 
Geekdom would be the place where we wanted to start that. For, for, for sure in San Antonio. Definitely at the time when we started that. Um, but what we, what we did was we took a look at the market, or at least you know the, the co-founder took a look at the market mm -hmm. and found an opportunity to simplify, simpl simplify a process in which we actually send out customer surveys uh, for, on behalf of a business. Right. and streamline the collection process or the, we call the feedback and reporting uh, and, and as well as allowing businesses to actually action on that we call close the loop mm -hmm. and so we were going to start with the email channel and it was very much structured with with using the mps methodology as the core metric to engage customers with, with after a relationship they've established with the business and so that's that's what we decided to tackle and that's and the specific focus of it being as a startup was making this simple accessible and so there was a big focus when we started saying okay we know what to do here we know our expertise in software what we can build let's stay focused on understanding why is this not accessible to other people uh, who, who have to go with either really expensive, we would call really enterprise, mm -hmm. like really high, high touch corporate, um, or it's just something like, like something like a survey monkey where you're like, it's whatever. Yeah. You just get us, you just, <laughs> you just throw out a survey and you can just collect the data, do whatever you want. Right. And that there was this, there was that big gap. And so we figured, can we find a market in, in between those two gaps? And Promoter was birthed based on that opportunity. Very cool. So the one of the co-founders, yeah. um, he was a product manager at Rack, or formerly a product manager at Rackspace. Is that right? That's correct. Oh, Chad Keck. Yeah, yeah. Chad Keck. Um, also the owner of uh, the for sale channel in the geekdom slack <laughs> that's right if there was something for sale chad had it there chad you know? had it there yeah. <laughs> yeah like he had his business call like keck enterprises that's and, like, right it was, it was and, and today i i this is something that just happened today while i was thinking about this interview and uh, i was thinking like what would be a potential tagline for keck enterprises in the for sale channel and then i was like we will <laughs> you will get a keck out of our low prices <laughs> Yeah, or, or like Kick Enterprises, like I can offer that. It's basically, <laughs> yeah, what, whatever you can think of, like, oh, I think I have something off the shelf that, that yeah. you can buy that's basically around what you're asking for. And, you, and you're like, what? I'm like, do you have a tax preparation machine? And you're like, oh, yeah, hold on, let me, let me go find that for you. And I'm like, what? You just have that? You know, it's just, yeah. it's always fun to, and, or he'll be like, well, if you cobble this and this, you actually will get that. And I was like, right. oh my gosh, I can't believe the creativity. But that's, that's, that was this for sale channel it was always yeah. like where he, to find fun stuff. He recently moved to a new house and I'm just thinking, man, it must've cost him like five grand for, for to get the movers to move everything from one warehouse to his new warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say I will. <laughs> I, I remember asking him one time, I asked if he had something for sale and he goes, let me check the shed. And I'm like, you have, you have a shed for things? He goes, one of them. I'm like, you have more than one shed oh for things? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so I just, it was, a, it was a, it was a good laugh. I was like, is this on top of the garage? You know, the, the, you know, which becomes everyone's storage area. You know, that's always fun. He's like, no, it's, anyway, it's... Kicks, yeah, he's like it's right above my underground bunker. <laughs> like, like yeah, what? <laughs> oh, I love Chad. Anyway, yeah, Chad's great. He's he's a legend yeah. in, in the geekdom community. But absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. To transition tra transition this back because he was one of the original members of geekdom, if I'm That's not mistaken. Right. And so That's he correct. he was the one who kind of like brought you guys into the geekdom fold, yep. right, into that space. Yep. So yep. from, from your perspective as, you know, as a technical director, as somebody who's a software developer, uh, what sort of value did you get being a part of the Geekdom community besides the free coffee that was like right outside your office for most of the time? It was the resources of the, of the space. Um, and I'm not talking about coffee. I'm talking about like 
being able to talk to people about what you were doing, what you were working on, and being able to communicate with them um, about your progress and just being around other like-minded efforts of similar of, of similar structure mm -hmm. to like tell them your story, talk to them about it, and then they're telling you theirs at the same time. I'm gonna share a small story if I can. Go for it. It's a really true story. Like this really did happen. When promoter was taking like being built, like the POC, uh, we didn't have a space to do the work. Believe it or not, we weren't trying to do a garage. Uh, we will both work full time. We we will live in apartments, so we're like, yeah, I, I don't have a garage. You know, I'm not yeah. trying to do this out of a garage. So we actually did it in the mall, <laughs> and then the mall was closed. And so they're like, you got to leave. Or like, oh, okay. So we'd like use, we'd get a coffee and just use the mall Wi-Fi to like build like the initial screens and the initial workflows. And they're That's like, hey, wild. we're closing. We're, hey, we're closing. And we're like, oh, okay. And then we just leave. And then so we would like have to end at 9 p.m. But there was so much work to be done yeah. that we needed more time outside of 9 p.m. And so, and I got really good. Like I knew where the elevators were. So I like the coffee, the coffee shop was like on the top floor. So mm -hmm. you can do the escalators or I just knew where the elevator was and I'd like fast track to the top floor. So I got really good at that. But yeah, so then, so I, we talked to Chad and we're like, what can we do before the move, you know, to, to, to San Antonio? Like, what can we do? And he's like, you know what? Geekdom's also in San Francisco. Let's get you there. And that's, that's what, like that's i mean of course they're open with your you know geek card and everything but right. um that's what introduced me to the geekdom space as a concept and then right like just right after that you know within six months it was to the geekdom san, san antonio office and so then we, it was just taking that same uh methodology uh, and moving it over there uh and just to like frame something for you guys a little, little like i'm just throwing out little nuggets when we were you know when we were having that half year stint just just to build the initial poc yeah uh, we were in the geekdom sf office because rackspace was there too it had it had a satellite i was upstairs uh instapage was actually uh in the same space as we were building promoter that's cool did not know that yeah yeah. So I like befriended Tyson Quick. He's a really great guy. And I remember like they restructured their whole pricing scheme and product offering. And it was like a champagne moment for them. And then he like came over and he's like, he's like, we just had a great quarter or like a great sales month. Like, it looks like it's going to be a good year. I was like, that's awesome. And then he goes, how can I help you out? I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> He was just like, it was, they were so early that it was that community of like, how do we help each other out? Yeah. So that's, that was, that was Tyson quick when he was still in, 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 in like a co-work incubation space. So if it tells anything about his character, but also tells anything about that's what geekdom as a space is about is that helping each other methodology that you're working on something. I'm working on something. I have that success moment. How do I share that with other people? Right. I haven't heard anyone mention Geekdom San Francisco in a number of years. <laughs> so, so, it's not there now, but yeah, it, yeah. it, it, it was um, it was definitely there uh, as a a quick. It wasn't the first one. I mean, Geekdom San Fran San Antonio was the first one, mm -hmm. and then it was so that was such a popular concept. They actually uh, the the Rackspace satellite asked, "Hey, can we get that too?" And they said, "Sure, we can do that as well." Yeah. And now it's not there anymore. No, it's not. A lot of things are not there right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's not trying to say anything against the co works, but like a lot of right, things are not right. there. Right, right. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's working here. Just to let you guys know it. Like, it works well yeah. enough here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, it, that's a different story. Maybe we, in, in a different video, we can talk about the history of Geekdom San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. It's not there now, but the San Antonio one is still alive and kicking, so which is yeah. great. Very cool. So the sort of the 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 penultimate question here would be, 
and what sort of problems keep you up at night? What are some things that you're you're passionate about right now <laughs> and you're you're thinking about on a frequent enough basis that you lose sleep and you you <laughs> just kidding on that last part. I'm not asking you to lose sleep, but I'm just saying, hey, what's something you're passionate about? Absolutely. Um, I'll be I'll be just dead honest with you. Um, I only want people to be dead honest with me. If they're they're, if they're honest with me, they're they're lying about something. <laughs> but if they're dead honest, then that means I'll, they're I'll, really I'll, honest. Yeah. So if I if I want to geek out, I can, I can say two two things. Can I say two things? Is yeah. Okay? Of course you can say two things. Okay. If you say one three thing that, things. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. It's too much honesty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love space, so I love watching SpaceX. So it's not that it keeps me up at night, but I just love following what they're doing. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, about, about getting us to another planet, um, which is a segue about the other thing that keeps me up at night. Uh, it's just, just in general, I mean, just to be really honest with you, it's just, is, is climate change. Uh, that, that part really, like, just, it, it, it doesn't wane on me, but it's just something I think about a lot, uh, yeah. about what it's doing. Uh, and what it has done, and what are we doing to address it? And I think of it from the lens of software, of course. That's what what can we do? Right. Um, and that's that's what I think about, and that's what keeps me up at night. Or that's what I read a lot about in the changing world about technology for helping climate change. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's one of the reasons. Shameless plug. Sorry to say it. That's why I got some solar panels with Big Sun Community Solar. Oh, cool. Uh, was help, yeah, I was to help against that effort. Yeah. That's excellent. Whenever I heard they were doing that, I was really excited about it. It's like, that's yes, such a, that's such a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's fantastic. Oh, my gosh. I can just do a whole video about just that alone, but I, I'll save. I'll save the <laughs> yeah, I'll save well, it. <laughs> It's just so funny that you, you mentioned that, though, because you and I have had a lot of conversations about automobiles and and how that relates to climate change. It's not just like, you yeah. know, hey, you know, there's there's the, the gas pipe and all that stuff is going in the atmosphere, but more like, you know, what are cars out there that are available, that are affordable, that are strictly uh, driven by electricity, right? So we're not dowsing a right. whole bunch of uh, more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and we've had very long conversations about this and i remember i told us like hey man i got a hybrid You're like that's cute <laughs> but not good enough <laughs> that's right i didn't mean to shame you but i i <laughs> yes you did <laughs> you well, had that challenge. bullet in the chamber you were ready to pull the trigger <laughs> hybrids to me i mean they're 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 great and all um uh, but they're like in some ways they're like if you're coming from a gas perspective mm -hmm. they work they work because you, you you have higher mpg mm -hmm. but if you're coming from trying to electrify perspective it's it's really the it's just the worst it's it's not the best of both worlds because the battery has such a limited range right uh, yeah it's very very limited so limited, right? And some of them are always like, look, 20 miles. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Like, was there, could we fit more maybe or something? Yeah, those are the plug-in um, hybrids. Plug-in hybrids can get like like 20 to 30 miles on, on the battery right. charge alone. But if you're talking about hybrids right. by themselves, it's usually about one to five miles on average on how far they're going so, to full charge. Right. So you have that complication of a powertrain system mm -hmm. sitting with the still gas part. Right. So you have to still like do the oil change. You guys still do the maintenance like a regular gas car, but the, those are one to five miles. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if like, okay, well, I have two bowling balls that I'm just going to have always on the car as weight because it's the battery and the powertrain system for, for, with the electric part. Um, and then I'm going to just double my motorized mechanism in the car mm -hmm. and we're going to marry them together uh, with a sort of planetary gear system or some other powertrain gear system. Right. Uh, and, and we're just going to make it way more complicated because <laughs> we can't <laughs> give up. We can't give up the gas part, but yeah. we want, we want this electric one to five mile, one to five mile range battery. 
uh, and we're going to sell that. We're going to give, we're going to give it to people, and people are going to get. We're going to going to say, awesome, and it's 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 um it's frustrating. It can be really frustrating for me, uh, just because uh, I want to geek out about this for sure, if I may. My first <laughs> electric. My first electric vehicle was not an electric car, although I do have an electric car. You've mm -hmm. actually ridden one of them. Yes. Uh, it was my fun. first, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. My first electric vehicle was uh, the boosted board. Oh, that's <laughs> right. I remember that. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my first poly, I was a poly plastic uh, mm -hmm. wheeled four wheel. <laughs> you know, just cruising just, down the street. Wearing right. a helmet, a knee pads, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I ate it so many times. Um, there's a there's a piece of me on the streets of San Antonio somewhere. Um, <laughs> You've bled for this city. <laughs> yeah. That was my first one. Uh, and I loved it so much. I used to do biking, but then I just wanted to go electric. Mm -hmm. But that was my first you know, electric powered vehicle. And I loved it. In fact, I had the car. I was lucky enough to live nearby downtown. I had the car... In the, I just let it sit in the garage because I thought this wheel thing was so cool. I made friends by just saying, "That's awesome." They just stopped me on the street, and be like, well, "I want, I, I need to talk to you about this thing." I was like, "Sure," and I just discuss it and talk about the vehicle. Um, and then I got a, uh, then I got a, uh, what's it called? An Irby. It's called Urban Electric. The Irby, yeah. Yeah, the it's red. It was two wheeled, mm -hmm. and it had a little seat so I could sit on it. And I took that downtown too, and that had, that was better. It had more range. It had more uh, had higher speed. And it was just seated position. It was mm -hmm. safer. Uh, I think the at the time it's now the San Antonio report. Now that it's the Rivard report, they covered it. They right. covered a piece about me to my, with my little commute. That's wild. I loved it. That's wild. I loved it. it. It just the same. Like people would just stop and just point. Like look at that. Look at that. You know. And I, I think my proudest moment. <laughs> I just hold on. Like I just love that you what? just like glossed over the fact that a, a a news publication in San Antonio, the Rivard Report at the time, had had done an article on you. And I'm just like I'm just waiting for like the next step. And then like Obama like did a press conference and he was just talking about like that Andrew Vellis or Vellis, well, excuse me. Uh, I called uh Andrew and I said <laughs> There you go, there it is. Great work with your electric vehicle. Just want you to know, Michelle and I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's great. It's like uh, this is a uh, uh, Sarah George with the uh, Fox News. Uh, <laughs> isn't climate change not real? <laughs> Those are just false facts. False facts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, like it's like the next step up. It's like, whoa, from Rivard <laughs> Report to the mouth of Barack Obama. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Yeah, I uh, I think it was um it was a it was a cold front day. I think it was like four, 55 that day. It was oh no, it was 45. It didn't go any lower than that. It was 45. There this was is San Antonio. There was what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like a cold freeze day. Like the city kind of closed down. Yeah, uh, and then Keaton was closed, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with with the with the scooter. I just want to see if it can do it. And everyone's all looking like, you're crazy. It's, it's, it's so cold out there. You're gonna die. Like, I, yeah, I'm like, am I going on the tundra of the Antarctic? Like, what's going? On? Watch out I'm for the polar gonna, bears. They're gonna get me on the river walk. They're just gonna pull me down. That's anyway. Right. Um, right. yeah, I remember doing it and my, like, I like put gloves on, double layered a North Face jacket on, my beanie, and the helmet over the beanie. I was that geeky about it or safety nice. geek about it. Yeah, you got to be safe and, in those things, man. Yes. And so then I made it over there and like I touched the metal because it's a metal structure. Mm -hmm. It was like, it felt like ice <laughs> when I got to keep But I made it. It's that uh, wind chill. Oof. It was so br it was brutal. My hands were so cold, but uh, it was just to prove a point that like it can do it. That was it. It was just for posterity for me. No, no, no. There was no like reward or ticker tape cutting to say you made it. It was just more of just like, ah, oh, this is really <laughs> kind of cool. This is really cool that I did this with this little scooter, you know. Um, 
And I remember some, there was no one on the streets. It was so cold. I remember this one tourist walk, looking at me and was like, nice. Because he's just. <laughs> <laughs> so like, Great. There was that scene. There was that scene from uh, Dumb and Dumber where Jim Carrey's on that little scooter. Mm-hmm. And they go to Aspen. It was like that. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever do it. But it was just it was just fun for fun's sake. That's all. That's why the only reason why I did it. That's so funny. I mean, like you were one of the most passionate people when it comes to, you know, the, the things that you really believe in. Like for example, yeah, absolutely. I can tell this re- one really story because I, I find this in- endearing and also kind of an example of. Uh, your your passion. Uh, so when you were driving the Leaf, the Nissan Leaf, which That's was right. which That's was right. a great car, uh, the Rand garage didn't have any places for you to plug in. So That's as, right. That's right. Yeah. So essentially you start just plugging into the wall while you were at work. And eventually they were like saying like, you know, hey, you can't do that anymore. And you're like, okay, well then build stations. It's not that expensive. Uh, and right. It's it's not going right. to be that much harder for you to do. The infrastructure is already there. And then like you, you took this all the way to like the head of Western Urban. And like, yeah. You had your My hands, yeah. yeah. You had your hands around his throat, and you're like, "Climate change is real, you son of a bitch." <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, it wasn't that extreme, but you did go up no. to to Randy at Western Urban, and you're like, "Hey, like this is this is a real concern. Like, there's there's there are people who park at the Rand Garage that have electric vehicles, and they want to be able to um, to to charge, charge them the there." Yeah. Yeah. And like that's not unreasonable. That's something that a right. lot of different places should be able to have. I know IKEA has it. I'm not really sure of that right. many places around San Antonio that do. But you know, hey, if Geekdom is kind of like the the place for startups and like kind of innovation, it just makes sense for it to have absolutely charging 100%. stations, right? Right. Yep. I mean, I can I can. So when I I have actually I have another story to add to that as well. Just to, oh boy, there's there's two there's two garages. That a car would go to, right? Mm-hmm. Place where you work, and the place where you live. Right. So I'll tell you that's. I'll tell you this, this story about the, uh, my apartment complex garage. Oh boy. Short <laughs> short answer is they all still got. They actually did get to add the charging, but I'll I'll share that story. Uh, but in regards to the, um, the Rand garage, uh, with Western Urban, and then, you know, hey, shout out to them. They got it in the actual Western Tower. And also the Frost Tower, they actually did add chargers there. Oh, excellent. So we do have, That's great. So, so we do have them downtown. Um, and, excellent. And, and two. So I was very much of like, that's great. What about the rain? I was just so like a stickler <laughs> about like, you know, it's never enough, Andrew. It's like, you're, not, you're never enough for me. You know, yeah. I just kind of like really holding it to it because the rain was just such, I don't know, just because I guess because I've been there for so long. Yeah. You know, we've been here. This garage has been here. Yeah. This is not a new facility. Uh, give it some TLC and add some charging. Um, <laughs> and it would be really enjoy. So I, I remember starting out with it. And of course, you know, I had a, I, I got an extension cord. Yes. And I like 110 outlet charge, which is like one to three miles an hour. Yeah, trickle. Really slow. <laughs> trickle. But, you know, I just did the math and eventually I realized like I would, I would net out positively at the end of it because my commute was so small. Uh, but but I remember doing it, and they told me they put a little slip like like please please call this number, and I was like, am I getting ticketed? I don't understand. I have a pass, uh, and um, I, they just told me like we for safety concerns we we need you to stop charging, and I said what what, <laughs> what safety? That's like a, that's concerns. like a trigger mechanism. You're like excuse me. <laughs> I was, like, I was really confused by the yeah. safety. Concerns. Please validate yeah. that claim. <laughs> I did ask that. I was like, "What? What? What? What safety is like?" I was just genuinely shocked. Yeah, I wasn't trying to like troll them. I was just like, "I, what are you talking about? Say, I don't understand." Yeah, and he's and then he just said, "Hey, listen, like, they just told me upstairs. That's what they told me to tell you." I said, "Okay, well, let me talk to them." So I got, I had a conversation. I think with the operations manager at the time with a Western Urban. And he, you know, him and I had a good amicable discussion about it. Um, and, you know, he says, you know, Western Urban is a very forward-looking program. They're looking at doing an electric vehicle program uh, around downtown. We're just not going to do rent, the rent at this time. And I said, okay, I understand. 
Um, but I, and I, th that's where that ended and it was totally fine. I, I, I totally understood where he was coming from. Um, and I just told him like, just in case, you know, I just want you to know, like, you know, we won't get there fighting each other. We're going to get there together. So uh, with the leaf, I said, you know, you're more than welcome to take a test ride with my leaf to show you what I'm, what it's like to have an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, he, says, he says, thank you. I appreciate it. He didn't take me up on it, but, but I did extend that olive branch so that it's, it's not about, you know, me and the versus the garage or something like that. It yeah. was just a way to say, you know, maybe, maybe you've never seen it yourself and that's absolutely understandable. Um, the, the uh, conversion rate of sales to electric vehicles in the United States, I think is like 2%. So two out of every hundred cars sold is electric mm -hmm. or at least partly electric. That's not a lot. No. So it's very likely that he already has a car and it's not electric. So that's, that was, that's where that, he never took me up on it. Um, but to talk about, if I may transition mm -hmm. to my apartment complex garage, that yeah. was fun. That was fun. Cause it ended in a happy note. Nice. That one was also, I had my, extension cord and my 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 girlfriend just laughed and she was you're going to do all this work and i said every time i do this my wallet sings because i save i save money and now at the time they had outlets around the garage again mm -hmm. 110 outlets and where they were were kind of precariously tucked underneath certain areas they weren't really that most accessible um in the garage and the funny thing is i can't believe i really did this i really did do this um, it was only available on the first floor and already when you're starting to ramp up past the gate, you're, you're on, you know, one and a half, two and a half. So you're moving up, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. well, the outlet is recessed here, but my oh, car is no. up here. So I used the third dimension to actually string the extension cord down two flights of garage floor and then plug it in there. And then I would kind of like cinch it to the kind of like a tie rod so it wouldn't like put uh slack on the adapter or any sort of like important areas that does the connection right and right, then just right. charging from like three floors up down, <laughs> down with a 50 foot extension cord uh to the, and, I, and i charge i would charge overnight and a lot of people are like you're you're, you're doing this with an extension cord like on the third floor when the outlet's on the first floor and you're you because the, the the garage was like exposed outdoor structure so you can kind of use the edge and it was fine it was safe uh but they're like that's crazy that you did that i was like i i, I need to charge my vehicle yeah. i mean there was there was the pearl but i'm not the pearl all the time right you know just it's something that's nearby downtown that has has charging as an amenity uh but uh so i would do that for a while uh, a lot of the neighbors were asking me what i was doing and I started giving rides just like I gave you a ride, Omar. Yeah, I took I took that offer to do the test drive. That was fun. I really liked that drive. That was awesome. Oh, oh um, I, after some time, there was a community meeting uh, engagement with some of the residents. I was not in there. And they asked the apartment complex, like, you know, what can we do to improve the amenities of the apartment complex? And one of the people that I gave a test drive to said, you know what we need? You know, kind of with that gusto voice. He goes, we need electric charging, vehicle charging. And they're like, and someone I think was like, yeah, that'd be nice. And so those rides I give, those drives I give are community advocacy for electric vehicle charging. And so I think it was in October, I think, I don't know, some year ago, <laughs> many a moon, but it was October <laughs> I was in California for a wedding and my phone just blows up and I was like, what's going, what's going on? I'm not even, you know, and it's all of my, all of my neighbors. They're like, they're like, Andrew, it's happening. It's happening. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? And, and then they show photos of them starting to like drill and put a metal rod to, to put the charging in the garage in the apartment complex. And they're like, you did it, you did it. I was like, I didn't, I'm, I didn't do anything. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in California right now. And they're like, no, Andrew, you did it. Like, they installed it because you had the car. 
<laughs> there's like people crying on the other <laughs> line. They're like, you did it. Oh God, it's so yeah, beautiful. I, 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 there's a text, someone, someone saying like, never leave. I was like, oh, okay, that's a little. <laughs> yeah, like, whoa. But to add, add, my work is done I, here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember talking to the leasing office about, you know, what, what made you guys, you know, checkbox the item. And I, I asked them two questions. Is this true? I asked them, I said, you know, was this an expensive job? And it, they looked at me and said, not really. I said, okay. <laughs> How did you guys, you know, what was your procurement process? We just got the maintenance to hire an electrician and we just got some Home Depot chargers. I'm like, oh, oh, oh okay. Word, and that's then, awesome. Yeah, they were just like, we're just going to go basic here. And it's behind the gate, so it's fine. And uh, uh, and, I, and they said, you know, um, we have lost customers because we didn't have the charger. Uh, we knew you were a resident for a long time. Um, not that that was the deciding factor. But we know that you had a car before we even had chargers. And I know you guys made, you know, you made it work. I, said, I had no choice. I, it's a for me, it was the future. And I was like, I'm not going to not be a part of it just because an outlet is not accessible. I'm going to make the outlet accessible. Um, but he said that the one of the, I think it was the office leasing manager, he said, on my last day, my last sign off for approval, he goes, the electric vehicle charging was it. It's my it was on my last day is when I approved it. And I was like, wow, just like that. Like on the, on the 11th hour, it's ticking, 55, 56, 50, <laughs> you know, T time is running out. I mean, eventually someone would have done it, but uh, that, that it was on his desk to, to sign, to approve. And he did do that. And uh, I thanked him for that. I said, thank you so much. Um, you, you're going to help a lot of people out without realizing it. Um, and you're going to help me out. So that was the kind of tearjerker moment about that happy ending there. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a really cool story. I mean, that's, that's, that's really cool. I like it, that how all that kind of came together, how your advocacy kind of drove people to be promoters uh, of this idea to have electric chargers in the uh, garage. And I think yeah. that all it kind of takes is just that, you have you have a leader who believes in something and then you have followers who believe in that same thing and they teach other people how to follow and then together they start a movement and that's essentially what you're kind of doing by your advocacy for climate change for driving electric all of that like seriously like i've i've switched over my wife to you know seriously you know take on like having an electric vehicle in the house that we're building, we're going to have a, an area for a charger. So we can just kind of install that very easily. And that way we can invest into an electric vehicle and not have to go to a gas station again. So, I mean, that, all that's want, very exciting. It is absolutely. And I was going to, I want to segue it back to Geekdom if I can, because I want to say this much, that same advocacy and passion was what I was there every day doing advocating for that community, advocating for the tenacity and the passions of the disciplines that people had there each and every day. Sure, we had coffee. Yeah, I guess there was soda. Um, but it's, it, wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't four walls in a the, in the soda machine, as Lorenzo would say. Right. It's, it was, it's what happens inside those four walls that really mattered. And I was a big advocate about this community for San Antonio. And it was one of the reasons why I think I really was really had a lot of gusto and still do about what promoter was able to do as a part of that community. Mm -hmm. uh, because I believed not only in the, what promoter was doing, but it was, I was believing in how we were going to accomplish it and what that would mean for the community by, by being there. Uh, and, and claiming that, making that claim, right? In a sense saying, we're going to find the extension cord to an outlet to power this thing. It's going to look weird. It's going to be like why we're doing it, but it's going to make sense at the end. And I think that was a really big f reason for me why I enjoyed that community so much. 
So tell me this then. This will be the the final question for our sure. our, our our short interview. This is the shortest interview we've ever done. Just kidding. Yes. It's almost like <laughs> it's forty five minutes into this, and and we'll, and we're gonna finish. So, uh, I I think I know the answer to this, and I think everyone listening will kind of know the answer to this. But what would be a way for someone to give back to the community to help someone out? What would be a way for someone to be helpful? In uh, specifically in Geekdom or in San Antonio, or you want just do you want me to start with Geekdom or, or yeah, let's uh, start with Geekdom. Let's let's start small and then kind of go from there. Yeah, let's do that. For Geekdom, I would say, uh, you know, on, it's, uh, this, I'm going to say it this way because this is what I'm just believing in right now. Mm-hmm. Um, listen to a community member and, and ask them, what do you care about and how can I help that? And I think that's the biggest thing we need to do right now, I think, in that community is listen to each other. And, and I mean, really listen, uh, not just say I, I stood here and I sat here and you gave a presentation and I left. Right. I'm asking about listen to what people are trying to accomplish and ask, can you actually contribute something valuable to it? If, if the answer is no, that's OK, too, by the way. But. Similarly to what we do a minute a day to make the world a better place, I say take a minute a day and and, and listen to somebody and, and really take in the community and you'll get a sense of where it's at. And I think even if it's just someone saying, you know, we lost a customer or, or we miss a deadline, something more, uh, that's very business oriented. Sure. Um, uh, or, you know, we had an outage or an issue and everything's broken or whatever, you know, those, those listening to those conversations is a way to help because you just, if anything, you're just there being there to feel that pulse of that. I think that's, I know that sounds very th- therapeutic, but I think at this point in time, we could really use some of that with each other. That is a fantastic answer. And it, does, it doesn't take a lot to ask someone no. a question and to listen to them. And it really is a good exercise in empathy, too. Um, Absolutely. Because when that's, you do listen fun. to someone, you are exercising that empathy muscle, if you will. So you, you can learn to feel for other people and be able to act accordingly if something does happen later on that's similar or, or whatever that situation might be. But yeah, it's practicing empathy. So I, I really like that you said that. That's a, something that's, I think a lot of us definitely need to hear more often these days, but also just the fact that we just need to practice it more often. And even though we're so disconnected, there's still ways that we can still keep connected. So I definitely like that you said Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's more critical now more than ever. And I think, like you said, practicing it, if it was not for the technology to which this actual conversation is taking place on, it is enabling many ways to to stay connected. Right. And I, I think we need to do that. Very cool. All right. So I know I said that was the last question, but I do have one more. Um, I'm here for you. The question is, who do you want to be on the at the Media Geek series? Like, who would be like the next person you would nominate? That's a good question. Anybody from SenseBark would be Sense great. Park. Yes, they're awesome people. I would like if they're still there. Talk to them. SenseBark. If you can, anybody from the Big uh, Big Sun community solar team like andre he's he's i think he's part of the venture for america program but he's he's working at big sun he's got he's probably got a fun story cool. uh because he's he's just like he built out kind of a lot of the ui mm-hmm. and he's just he was like he was just heads down in it like he's he's at the meet and greets but he's writing software i see the screens him and i were kind of geeking out about like screens for coding and like what are the right sizes do you do vertical or not so, so for sure, for sure, Andre from Big Sun, um, the two co-founders from uh, um, from SensePark would be really awesome. I think it's Bethany, and I can't remember the other guy's name, but yeah. 
All right, those are cool. just those are three. Those are three. I, I gave you more than one. <laughs> I know. Wow, three hundred percent increase. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Well, again, on, uh, Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the the stories and and the wisdom that you kind of shared with us today. And I hope you, the audience, got something out of this, something valuable out of it. Uh, if anything, it was an entertaining uh, like half hour talking about electric vehicles. Let's be honest. <laughs> like That was awesome. Like I love talking about that stuff. That's why I always go to Andrew to talk about it. Uh, and he's always a trooper. He's always willing to, to share his knowledge and, and share his passion for these things. Absolutely. Yeah. Someone referred to me once as a library of information. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like... I was like, well, make sure you return the books on time, please. No, nice. <laughs> you could have been like, well, make sure you uh, make sure you follow the license before you import me into any sort of uh, production product or commercial product. <laughs> That's great. Yes, exactly. That was a nerd joke. Nerd joke. All right. So, <laughs> all right, everyone. So thank you all for watching. Thank you, Andrew, for being here. And definitely do not forget to be helpful. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.